After e4, c5, knight f3 and e6, knight c3, one of the main moves here is a6. Now the move I suggest to continue this is g3, because this move has compromised black's idea. I mean, we all know that black will have to play b5 at some point, and so the bishop will want to go to the fianchetto, because from there he'll be attacking this diagonal. And the fact that black has a pawn in c5, it's a Sicilian game, means that black cannot have a pawn in c6, and so this diagonal will be quite good for the white bishop. So let's go to the repertoire. Now here, the black player might play queen to c7, it's one of the moves that will have to happen, knight c6, knight f6, all of these moves, bishop e7, they're kind of interchangeable, like the order, but right now, as we mentioned in the previous video actually, black can play queen to c7 immediately, so what if he does it one more one move later. Well, it's fine. It, it's gonna look pretty much the same. White goes on with bishop to g2 and after knight c6, white goes on with d4. So this move is gonna happen anyway. And after take, take, and knight to f6, white now castles, and now bishop to e7. So, very solid situation. I'm pretty sure that so many of us have seen this position a trillion times if you're, if you're an e4 player. Well, if, if you watch this channel, you are an e4 player, just like me. And if you're a d4 player or c4 player, uh, make sure you share my videos. And so if I get to become a YouTuber full-time, then I'll be able to cover the entire chess repertoire, which is the whole point of this channel. Before we go on with this super boring move, let's go and instead of looking at bishop e7, let's look at bishop to b4 now. How to continue. Okay, so here we have to avoid the trade. Usually we have this pattern where the knight is in b5 and then the bishop takes back, but we can take back. Right now the black player is threatening a thematic move in this situation for the e6 Sicilian players. Basically what they want to do is break, double up and isolate your pawn structure. So the best move here is knight to a4. We don't have to worry about the pawn in e4 because it's protected. And by the way, b5 doesn't trap the knight if you were looking at it because e5. And you're attacking the opponent knight. A lot of things impossible now, but they're not really. So knight to e5, remember you're discovering an attack on the rook. Queen to e5, remember that you have two pieces attacking c6. Pawn takes knight in a4 is met by knight takes, and here you still have, you're still attacking the knight, whilst you're also threatening to remove the knight by taking the bishop, and then you still have the great diagonal, the bishop's attacking the rook in a8. And if instead black doesn't do any of that, but rather plays knight to d5, saving the knight for the moment, it looks like this knight is still trapped. So now white plays a3, counter-attacking basically the bishop, and now the bishop moving away in e7, allows the white player to play c4. It's not like white is completely winning here uh, or anything, but our position is better. So the idea obviously here is to take the knight and then go for d6. Also we have double attack in b5, so black will have to do something about it. Once black takes the pawn like this in c4, then you can take the knight. Yes, you've given away your fianchetto bishop and it looks weird because black is just going to take back. This knight is still weirdly placed. But now white plays knight to f5, targeting g7, whilst the queen comes with an attack in d5. So how do you stop all of that? Because the queen d5 attack is going to be very strong. A move like queen to e5 looks like it saves everything. Protects this pawn, protects this pawn, but now you will just take the, the bishop in e7. And now black can take, let's say, if black takes with a knight, the best move is rook to e1. And white is going to ultimately win a piece. If black instead takes with the queen, the best move is knight to b6, comes with an attack on the rook. And after the rook moves, either way, knight to d5, it's a fantastic position. It's evaluated over plus 4 or something, so the game plays itself. Let's make a recap so that we can quickly explore that position once again. Knight c3, and after a6 we're going from the fianchetto. So g, a queen to... Okay, bishop g2, knight to c6, d4, take, take. Knight to f6, castle, and we were looking at the line bishop to b4. Now here, as we mentioned, knight to a move. we don't want to break the pawn structure like that. b5, we are not trapped yet, because as we said, we're going to play e5. After knight to d5, we played a3, and in the previous line, we went through the bishop moving backwards. What happens if black takes the knight in a4? Well, obviously now, we take the knight in c6 first. We don't want the knight to keep defending the bishop as we were planning to take. Now you may argue that black also has a knight in d5 defending the pawn in d4, but then that will discover a very threatening attack on the rook. 
So now we're equal in material, and we also have double attack on the d5 square. So if black removes this bishop, you do have double attack on d5. And queen takes e6 is a tempo blunder, basically, because then you're going to recapture the, the bishop in b4, and then the knight is pinned. So there's no reason for the black play to go through this. Also, white has the bishop then. So after pawn takes the knight back, now white recaptures the bishop in b4. And now knight b4 loses to queen to g4. You're attacking the pawn in g7 and also the knight. And you cannot argue that the, the black knight can go knight c2 with an attack on the rook and, and get it equal because the problem is black sa king safety. So after knight c2, queen g7, yes, you'd lose the rook, but then you take this one with check. And you've got the bishop pair. And after developing, so let's say the king goes to d7, you're going to have a check available. Uh, which is com it's completely deadly if, if king e7 then bishop g5 will allow you an attack on the knight it's a beautiful game to continue so here in this position instead of taking in b4 with the knight let's say what happens if black castles first now there is a threat on b4 okay now rook takes a4 and you're protecting the pawn and you also won another pawn. so after queen takes e5 white continues with c4 attacking the knight and yeah, white has an advantage. Black plays knight to e7 to protect the pawn because you have bishop c6 available. If you get to take this pawn, then this would be a majority that will win against this lonely pawn in e6. So after knight e7, rook e1 attacking the queen. And after queen c7, bishop to f4 finishing the attack. And after queen to b6, queen to d6 by white attacking the knight and putting double attack on c6. Black goes to d8 with the queen to defend the knight. Now we can't really take anything without giving up the double attack we have on c6. So the final move is b5, exploiting the fact that this pawn in a is pinned, can't take because the rook will fall, and white will easily produce a pass pawn because of that. So for example, c takes, then you just take back. You don't capture the rook immediately, of course, and then you just keep applying pressure on a6, but you're also threatening to push b6. If black plays bishop b7, now you play b6. Queen cannot take b6 because of queen takes knight. And you've successfully produced a pass pawn. If black defends the knight with the rook, now it's attacking the pawn. Then needless to say, queen to c7, attacking the bishop. Threatening a swap. The pawn here in c7 will be a monster pawn.